Hi, my name is Phil. I'd like to talk about politics. In this video, I'd like to discuss the trade-off between principles and party politics that Labour face when it comes to presenting policies on, say, the granting of a referendum on Scottish independence, should they achieve power. Something that they wouldn't seek to block in the same way as Boris Johnson's Conservatives. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, seem to be having a few videos at the moment on the issue of Scottish independence referenda, don't we? Largely, has to be said, this is down to Boris Johnson shining a spotlight on the issue with his tour of Scotland, uh, which seems to be missing out in Glasgow altogether, as far as I can tell. Now, of course, this is what a Prime Minister should do. Of course, shine a spotlight on the important issues that really need a public debate. Except what gets shown with this spotlight may not be quite what Johnson intended. But anyway, the focus of this discussion is essentially on how Labour play the game. Because the Conservatives have one attitude. Conquest. They refuse to grant another referendum, even if conditions would dictate that the people of Scotland might want one inherently undemocratic. And don't get me wrong, my own stance on this is as follows, for the avoidance of doubt, one, I am not in favour on the further breakup of our power by splitting up into even smaller, weaker parties on the world stage. That being said, this is a matter for Scotland, not for me. Second, there was a referendum a few years ago. We should not be having one every few years. It was billed as a once in a generation event, and that should generally be the case. However, one major promise on the Remain side, if you want to call it that, um, Better Together I think is what it was officially called, was that Scotland, as part of the UK, was part of one of the three major players in the EU. That was a big rallying call and it's, uh, it's not true anymore, is it? And it was, it was made not true fairly quickly after that referendum as well. So at the end of the day, the result is invalidated by that. Now, Labour, under any leader, would not, of course, force Scotland to remain in the Union against its will. But there are different ways of ensuring that. Now, this reaction is essentially prompted by a, com a combination of a tweet from my favourite political commentator. But it's about an interview with Labour Shadow Minister John Ashworth. Now, he responded to the question about what would Labour do? Inevitably, Labour are going to be asked this. He responded to the question, uh, not at all the way I would respond to it. Um, but I'm going to explain the principles and the politics at stake here, hopefully. So essentially, Ashworth said that Labour does not support an independence referendum. Clumsy way to phrase a policy there. Clumsy way. Um, what I would suggest is something that wouldn't be a million of miles away from it. But it's, it's very clumsy because it's misleading. Because people can and will take that to mean that they would block calls for referendum in the same way that the Conservatives are. Now that's not what he's saying. Not supporting it is not the same thing as actively blocking it. Because if you take the view, for example, that Westminster should not have a say on that, then whether Labour would seek to block it or not, what you could imply is... Actually, this should be a matter for the Scottish Parliament. And of course, Labour within the Scottish Parliament would seek to block it. But of course, if they were in a minority, then it would go through. That's not what he said. Um, he should have made it clear that the Labour Party would not call for a referendum. But that essentially this was a matter for Scotland and should not be a matter for Westminster. That is what I would like the policy to have been stated as. Now, this seems obvious enough to me. Because take, for example, Brexit. Westminster was able to unilaterally issue a referendum on the whole of the UK leaving the EU. So by the same token, Holyrood should be able to do likewise on the issue of Scotland leaving the UK. Because for you to be able to say that the Scottish Parliament shouldn't be able to issue a referendum on Scottish independence is the same as saying that actually the UK alone shouldn't have been able to issue a referendum on leaving the EU. It should have been the EU. Um, to argue that is to be an idiot. Of course, if Westminster get to decide whether the UK leaves the EU, then Holyrood should decide on whether Scotland gets to leave the United Kingdom. 
like I say, to argue otherwise is to be an idiot or to at least treat your audience as being idiots. And expressed that way, you essentially have the same policy in a way that means you aren't presenting a undemocratic view and also a view that gives you a few years still to consider the detailed policy because you have to focus very much on the party politics here. The detailed policy is important. So consider this. Labour want to return to power in 2024 after a very long and it will have been bruising 14 years in the wilderness. Now, to do this, they need to significantly increase the number of Scottish seats that they win. Now, general elections are never about a single issue, of course. Not everyone who voted Conservative was voting for the hard Brexit, even though they basically did. But for some people, it can be about a single issue. And that matters. And for an awful lot of people, it can be about a single issue. So the matter of Scottish independence is about half and half. Recent polls suggest that a majority are in favour of independence. When the referendum was held, 2014, there was a majority in favour of remaining, but it wasn't huge, it wasn't a huge swing. Now, what I don't know, if I were thinking as a Labour Party strategist, what I don't know is what is the split amongst those who vote in general elections? Because there'll be some people who'll be going, oh, there's a majority in favour of independence, so it's madness to oppose it for Labour. No, don't be ridiculous. Because someone who might vote in a referendum for life-changing constitutional change doesn't necessarily vote in a general election. Also, where is the spread? Because winning seats with first past the post isn't about getting as many people to vote for you as possible. No. It's about getting one more person to vote for you in each seat than your nearest rival. And some people do vote on single issues. And some people will vote on this single issue. And if Labour look like they've moved to, say, the pro-referendum side, then who are they competing with for votes? The SNP. What's the point of that? What was the point, for example, of Labour trying to compete on a Brexit stance with the Conservatives? They were Brexit light, stupid, ridiculous. They should have gone for the Remain vote. And it's the same thing here. You know, if you want to use your general election vote to vote for a single issue like this, you are surely unlikely to vote Labour over the SNP if you're in favour of Scottish independence, aren't you? So it might well be that Labour would have far more chance of success chasing the pro-union vote, which is their natural position anyway. I mean, who's going to really believe that Labour would stack the odds in favour of independence anyway. Ridiculous. I mean, I don't know either, I will have to say, because I've not seen any research that tells me one way or the other. But Labour are going to have to carry out this research as it gears up for the election. doesn't have to do it now. wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing, but it doesn't have to do it now. But it does have to do it as it gears up for the actual election in order to inform its policies. So Labour need to consider very carefully where is the richest seam of swing voters to be found? The pro-independence or the pro-union camp? And it might be that there's a definitive answer now, or it might be that it could change over the next few years. Again, I don't know. The next consideration is how to ensure that it is made a matter for Scotland, because that is key, but that you have an opportunity to strengthen the union first. Because here's the situation right now, Boris Johnson has made the union weak. By 2024, it will be even weaker again. Again, doesn't matter which side of the independence debate you sit on. I cannot see anyone arguing against that. Polls show it. It's stark. So Labour absolutely need to put in measures to allow the test to occur. And it needs to, it's very much like Northern Ireland with a border poll. There needs to be something in there for Scotland that basically says, look, this is taken out of the hands of government. As soon as this, these criteria are met, that will trigger a poll. But to give them time to strengthen the case first. So if they campaign on a promise of simply saying that another referendum is a matter for the Scottish Parliament, then you know what would happen. The SNP will demand that the minute Labour form a government, there is a referendum. Get onto it right now. So you'd thrust the party straight into a constitutional crisis campaign when there'll be so much work to be done for the whole country. Either that or you delay it and look like you're not keeping your word because the SNP will barrack and barrack and barrack and barrack and barrack. So my suggestion would be that you promise whole scale reform. And this isn't pie in the sky, but I'll come to that at the end. 
you promise whole-scale reform that massively increases the level of devolution. With not just saying we're going to, not like the Conservatives, oh, we promise devolution max and then you actually scale it back. No, no, no. Detailed policies. For all parts of the UK. I mean, I'm talking about Scotland here, but this applies everywhere. Included in the measures would be the right for any devolved parliament to issue a referendum on the issue of leaving the union, meeting certain criteria, which would be removed from Westminster. Nothing to do with Westminster. That way, Westminster would be completely removed from the decision making on such a move. Couldn't be blocked by Westminster. It, it would be down to the devolved parliament. Hey, presto, instantly it's a democratic process. You could tie in a clause that says that a referendum can only be issued, say, once every 10 years or something like that to prevent it being an annual event until separatists get the result they want. You could also mimic some of Switzerland systems. In fact, I would advise this to make sure that the result of any referendum could be challenged in law if there was any law breaking or misinformation on the part of any significant group campaign on either side. If that was deemed to be likely to have influenced the results, there needs to be a legal challenge to make sure it's done cleanly. And we all know which party we're aiming that one at. Now, adopting a policy like this would mean that should Labour win power in 2024, there would be a referendum. But it would take a few years because you'd have to put everything in place first. Because it wouldn't be Westminster saying, yes, we're going to issue a referendum like last time. It'd be no, 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 the Scottish Parliament will do that. We're going to bring in these measures, which will include lots of powers, including that. Because the devolution measures would have to be implemented, it would give them the few years, wouldn't be lots and lots of years, but it would be a few years necessary to build up the strength of the union. It would give them that time to not only talk, but also show the improved power for the Scottish as well as the Welsh and the Northern Irish voters to influence their own affairs. Wouldn't hurt to put some English devolution in while we're at it. Because it seems clear to me that one big driver for breaking up the union is simply the feeling of not having democratic representation. Understandable enough. So those are my thoughts. I think Labour have responded clumsily here. Um, but there are going to be party political considerations when stating any policy. Now I've said before, I'm not going to change my mind now, Labour in opposition need to prioritise achieving power. And if that means stating a policy in a particular way to do that, fine. But that being said, and as my final point, that I may pick up in a separate video as well at some point. Keir Starmer, the Labour leader, interestingly, has been speaking about the need for electoral reform recently to address the issue of people feeling that they are not being represented by the current system. This was the clearest indication yet that Labour are going to get fully behind electoral reform that would include dropping first past the post as a system for deciding general elections and governments. So there is some hope that if Labour can handle the issue intelligently, we could be on to a winner here. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.